Presenting Dr. Brad McRae, CSP, author of six books and platinum level presenter. Here's Brad live. Les Brown is giving a presentation called The Magic of the Moment. So if you will just snap your fingers with me. This is what Les Brown, oh you guys are good. And then he stopped. And he said, I'm usually not at a loss of words. But I had to visit a very dear friend. In fact, she was the only person left of my mother's generation. And she was in the hospital dying of cancer. So he goes down to the room and they have a very good conversation. Near the end of the visit, Francis Robinson, whose body is riven with cancer and chemotherapy, has the radio on and there's a song that comes on from the 1920s. And she lifts her hand as she starts snapping it. And then Les Brown in this absolute gorgeous baritone voice says, and the lesson that she has for us is not to let life take our snap away. Well, I, I, I had the tape and I played it a couple of times going back and forth to the cottage. I go up to Toronto to present uh, Meeting Professionals International and I come back and I'm at home at a quarter to 11 on Sunday. And I drive up to the house and I look and there is a patio chair from the back deck on the front deck. And I thought, well, that's a bit strange, but you know, if you have kids, you're used to having strange things happen. And then I look around and the microwave oven's gone. I go into the living room and the stereo's gone. I go upstairs, the TV, the VCR's gone. So I, I called my ex-wife who's gonna bring the kids over. I said, I just wanna warn the kids that we've been robbed. I just want them to know. So my daughter, Catherine, who had heard the Les Brown tape, blonde hair, blue eyed, 10 years old, comes into the house, climbs up to the landing, looks me in the eye and says, Dad, don't let those robbers take your snap away. <laughs> your keynote speech was a perfect complement to our conference. With speakers such as David Frum, Walter Gretzky, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., you helped us achieve our goal to make this conference the best in our 25-year history. Brad teaches how mastery in leadership, negotiation, and presentation come together in a way that is absolutely seamless. So seamless, in fact, that you can't tell where one starts and the other ends. Paul was the only one who said that he prepared for the conversation with me. I sent everybody some sample questions. He said, I read the sample questions over on Sunday night, and I took some briefing notes. Now, if he would prepare that well for an interview with me, how well do you think he would prepare for a major negotiation that would affect the future of Canadian National Railroad? Now, when he became president of CN, everybody at CN was disappointed. He was parachuted in from the government and had absolutely no railroad experience. He immediately benchmarked CN against the best railroads in North America, of which there were six. He found out, because objective criteria is very persuasive, he found out that CN, it was more expensive to move a ton of freight at CN than any other major railroad in North America. He found out that it took more senior vice presidents and vice presidents to move a ton of freight at CN than any other railroad in North America. He found out it took more administrative assistants and secretaries to move a ton of freight at CN than any other railroad in North America. As a result, there was a pretty painful process, but 11,000 people were let go. And he also had a vision of where CN should go. His vision was that CN would become the first NAFTA railroad. It already went from the Atlantic to the Pacific to the Arctic. They brought Illinois Central. It now went to the Gulf of Mexico. As a result of that foresight, over 58% of CN's freight now runs north-south. He didn't stop there. He entered into talks with Burlington Northern Santa Fe that would merge Burlington Northern Santa Fe and Canadian National Railroad. As you know, 
the regulators on both sides of the border squelched the deal. Seven days later, seven days later, it was announced in the papers that Canadian National and Canadian Pacific, these two railroads had been bitter enemies since the beginning of time, would share all of their track in Western Canada and save $35 million per year. Now, you cannot tell me that he pulled that negotiation off in seven days. What this means is that he was negotiating two separate and distinct futures for that railroad simultaneously. Is that not strategic? Dr. Brad McRae gave a keynote to our North Florida MPI chapter entitled The Seven Strategies of Master Negotiators. Since his presentation was part of our platinum level presentation series, the expectations were very high. Brad hit a home run with ratings of 6.5 out of 7 on content and 6.7 out of 7 on style. You have just seen that Brad is a master storyteller. Here's Brad demonstrating his interactive style. Now the people that I interviewed had developed higher order negotiating and influencing skills. Now, what does that mean, higher order? I'd like to demonstrate that for you. And I'm going to ask Ted from Hamilton to come up here. Let's hear it from Ted from Hamilton. The analogy that I want to make to higher order negotiating, influencing public relations skills is to swimming skills. So this is Ted from Hamilton. He doesn't know how to swim. So he goes to the University of PEI and he enrolls in a course and Nancy Garapik is his instructor. Now, deathly afraid of the water, <laughs> after two Prozac and a couple of Valium, <laughs> he's ready to start. So Nancy Garapik, and I want to see this, she says, Ted, I want you to swim. This is a length of the pool. I want you to swim from one end of the pool and back again. This is a 300 front crawl, just using your arms. So can you demonstrate just using your arms? Oh, this guy is good. Now, now I want to see this. Nancy Garapik says, that's great. Now I want to see you swim from one end of the pool and back again, just using your legs, just with the kick. Oh, this guy is very good. So lastly, she says, I want you to swim from one end of the pool again, using your arms and your legs. Let's see that. Wonderful, wonderful. What's she doing? That's okay, that's fine. That's fine. Very motivated. She's doing a differential diagnosis. So we want to know what you do well, but there are some targets for improvement. Brad knew exactly what he wanted to teach, and he taught it superbly. To book Brad for your next event, you can contact him with the information provided with this DVD.